Hey friends, welcome to Hot News. Hope you're doing well. It's so good to see you after just a day of drama yesterday where everybody didn't get the fact that it was sarcasm at the beginning, even though we clearly labeled it that way. And you know, I can never hate on Papa Linus. Anyways, I'm just a Linus worshiper. I should be banned. Let's go ahead and talk about today's video sponsor, which is our brand new merch. We've been talking about this a lot. You guys definitely like it. Apparently our top selling item so far is a pillow. The It Just Works pillow is the most sold item out of everything thus far. So you guys have been responding well to the merch. We still have it going for sale. Everything is retraced. We've got It Just Works. If you really want to rep your green team love, just pick up our merch at the link in the video description. You know you wanna. So with that being said, let's jump on into the hot news, which we'll first talk about the title of the video, which is the release date of AMD's Ryzen 3000, the X570 motherboards, and potentially a few Navi GPUs. So this is a rumor that's floating out on the internet. However, it's not one that I think is completely unsubstantiated given AMD's previous indications of things that they do, which are kind of a little cringe, and it makes sense that they would do this as well. So this is coming from Red Gaming Tech, as well as a few other places. We're expecting that Ryzen 3000 should launch launch on the date of July 7th, 2019. And you wonder yourself, why that specific day? Well, if we look at what they just did with Radeon 7, they launched it on February 7th, 2019. Why February 7th? Because it's 2-7. It's Vega 2, Radeon 7, 7 nanometers. <coughs> 7 nanometers of actual GPU goodness. Then 7-7-19 would be the date that Ryzen 3000 comes out because it's on seven nanometers. It's seven nanometer products of the the CPUs as well as potentially the Navi GPUs. And that is what we're expecting. This lines up with the information that we've heard that we should get an unveiling at Computex with them actually going on sale on 7-7-2019. And it's still just a rumor, but at least we have something to aim at and hope for and get our, you know, our eggs in a basket. Let's get all of our eggs in a basket, shake them around. That's what I do when I'm excited. So let's do that together while we wait for July 7th. See if it comes or it goes, either way. Uh, life is gonna be a box of chocolates. That's what my mama told me. You know what else I've been told? I've been told that Linus is a, is a thieving money grabber who just likes to copy strike people on purpose intentionally, not, it's not YouTube, it's, it's Linus himself. Uh, so obviously yesterday's video, we talked about the whole controversy that's going around with Linus apparently copy striking channels such as Carrie Holzman, as well as another one I believe was called BitTech, Bitech? Bi by tech, uh, they actually said that everything was resolved on their side, and then they said, thank you so much, Linus. And then Linus was like, yeah. But uh, Kerry going hard, saying that any Linus worshipers in his uh, live stream need to be banned immediately, so that's fun. But then he also said that um, we can't talk about this, and it's not automated, because nobody's running the heaven benchmark and getting copy striked in their video, except for us right now, and we're running it, and I can guarantee you either one of two things will happen. We will not get copy, copyright claimed for this because Linus doesn't actually think he owns Heaven Benchmark and he's not actually trying to do this and it's actually an automated system. Or two, the automated system will actually flag us. It will take us 30 seconds to appeal it and we'll be totally fine. Linus won't get our money. Linus isn't actually trying to get anything, but here you go. Here's the Heaven Benchmark playing right now. Carrie, my friend, it is an automated system. I don't know where you're getting this notion that Linus is coming after you for your money. I, I'm sure those videos that were claimed weren't making that much money anyways because they're older videos and they're just playing. Obviously it sucks. You don't wanna be copyright claimed. YouTube system isn't perfect. It shouldn't be happening. This is actually a problem. You're totally right. But you're aiming your frustrations and your vitriol at the wrong target. It's not full screen. It's not Linus, it's YouTube. Also, one of the things that he stated in his video, which isn't exactly true, is that we all are part of the content ID system. And while that's true in theory, the, the priority is given to MCNs and they do have a backside access to YouTube to make sure that their copyright stuff is accessed first to be matched against it. It's the same thing with big labels such as like Warner Brothers. When they upload a trailer, they get first dibs on that kind of crap. 20th Century Fox gets first dibs on copyright claiming stuff because of their size and the effect that it would have on YouTube if they were somehow to pull out. So full screen 
screen has bigger sway, their content ID match matters a whole lot more than anybody else, which is why it's happening. Not because Linus is telling them you need to do it, not because full screen is telling YouTube that they need to do it, but simply because of a prioritization of the impact that they have on the platform altogether. It's wrong, it sucks, but it's not malicious, it's not intentional, it's just happening. So uh, Heaven has been running for a little while. I'm pretty sure we're not gonna get copy striked. It, it's the sheer misinformation that's going on by his part that upsets me the most. Like he's calling out Linus for it. His response seems the most malicious side of everything else. Yeah, I, I only see one person with maliciousness and it's Carrie. Yeah. Linus has addressed it in the live stream, has said multiple times that they're working with full screen and even tweeted out that they got it resolved and told full screen to dial it back. They're doing everything that they can. They have nothing to apologize for. There is no intention on their part. They're taking all necessary measures to make sure it's not happening. And everybody should just go about their merry way and not really get upset with it. It's not affecting anybody's livelihood. It's not affecting anybody's business. It's literally 30 seconds of your time to dispute a copyright claim. But you know what is affecting business? Intel, because they just acquired an Indian startup to help with their GPU development that's supposed to be going hot and heavy and coming out in 2020 with the discrete graphics. That's what we're looking for. So it's a startup in Hyderabad, India, who is making some chips for wearables and it looks like they think that they could use them for what they're bringing out on the upcoming Intel Z. And then if you're interested in the Metro Exodus drama that's happening, because we all need more drama in our lives, the retail packaging that was shipping had a Epic Games sticker on top of it. But then when you peel it back, oh wait, hey, <laughs> there's the original Steam logo right there. Oh, that's so funny. Look at that. Oh, Epic Games. You just peel that sucker back. There's the Steam logo. Hey, hey, <laughs> that's a baby. That's a messed up. Anyways, this next story. So this is this is a uh, website called thispersondoesnotexist.com where this baby who's a little messed up doesn't actually exist because it's all completely AI generated. That man does not exist. That person does not exist. Not a real person. Not a real person. Not a real person. They all look like real people, but they are just completely AI generated fakies. You're a fake person. You're fake. You don't exist. I don't, oh, ooh, that looks like Jensen. That looks like Jensen's face superimposed on a baby. Anyways, if you wanna continue to roam through thispersondoesnotexist.com, we'll leave a link in the video description. As Reese was saying, this is obviously just a, an attempt to get us all to freak out when they show us a picture of ourselves and we're like, oh, I'm not real, do I exist? Am I a real boy? Okay. And then we've talked about in a hot news episode a while ago, the Smack Z, which is a handheld Ryzen powered, what? It's Smack Z. It's the name. It could be smock, like, because it could be mock be with an S. Smock Z. If the Smock Z is a new handheld gaming PC with a Ryzen embedded processor in it using Ryzen CPU and Vega graphics, and it was a Kickstarter that happened and Indiegogo as well that happened a while ago. They never delivered on the product, but they continue to innovate and show off different prototypes that they have, the latest being the Alpha prototype. And there's several videos of showing that it can run games such as Overwatch, Cuphead, and uh, StarCraft. So kind of cool. Uh, uh, a lot of people are super suspicious about them and it could be that they're just releasing updates so that they don't get sued for the $1.2 million that they raised. Or it could be that there are technological issues that they did not foresee that they've had to work through and that's the whole reason they haven't delivered on it and you're not gonna get a product that you originally thought you were but they still have the money and they're really trying. So uh, either way, it's a cool little product which is why I bring it up in hot news but you know what else is a cool little product? Not really, Intel's ninth generation mobile processors. They have been unveiled in an official Intel document including up to an eight core 16 thread CPU in the mobile version, which would be the 9980HK. That's bananas, up to five gigahertz boost, eight core 16 threads, that's insane in a laptop. My goodness. Uh, but big rip to anybody who bought a gaming laptop since Nvidia unveiled the new RTX series because you're gonna get completely replaced by the ninth gen CPUs. Yeah, good job. You could have waited for eight cores and 16 threads, but you got stuck with the i7-8750H, which is what we have in the, our Wootwear Woot books right here. I love it so much. I've had this for a while, so I'm not bitter. And then there's also a listing for the most scrum uh CPU that could ever exist. It's the 9900K F. See, no idea what it actually is as of this point, but Ida64 Extreme updated to support the uh, kernels chip, which is gonna be pretty good. 
finger looking good, some would say. But let's talk about the 1660 Ti because there's a bit more coming out about it. The $280 launch price ha apparently has been confirmed by a few people. Hard OCP ran a report saying that the GPU was supposed to come out last Friday. I didn't really believe it. I think it's coming out this Friday, which all intents and purposes, all of the leaks we're getting seem to indicate, yeah, we're, we're just a few days away from this thing launching. There's also benchmarks, at least one, Final Fantasy 15, showing that the 1660 Ti goes toe to toe with the Titan X and a little bit better than the GTX 1070, which is all the rumors that we've been seeing thus far. And there was also a listing on Amazon for the Gigabyte Gaming OC 6 gig, and it looked like it was priced at about 286 pounds, which if you just do a direct number swap, then at $280 makes sense. Obviously pounds are worth more, so it's not conversionary, but that's, I don't wanna admit the supremacy of the British Isles, okay? Moving on, Nvidia accidentally revealed ray tracing for Unity in the earnings call that Jensen had last week on February 14th, where they were talking about all the things and why everybody should be excited about ray tracing. He talked about how Unreal and Unity games are all gonna support ray tracing. And Unity's like, wait, what? We haven't announced ray tracing support. So uh, we'll see if that's coming or if Jensen's just saying, you know, it's gonna happen. Well, and then he makes it happen. <laughs> what stealing the thunder. What? No, no, I don't think it's stealing the thunder. I think it's a, we said it's gonna happen. You are gonna put ray tracing in your game. With a leather jacket on, of course. That's how Jensen makes this stuff happen. I imagine he has a chain that he just carries to meetings like this. Speaking of chains somehow, TCL is working on a foldable smartphone that is supposed to then turn into a smartwatch on your wrist. Kind of a cool technology, but if it does not get on your wrist like one of those snap bracelets where you go and then it flaps around like that, if it doesn't do that, then I'd say everybody boycott the company. Totally not worth it. It's kind of a cool idea. I, I actually wouldn't mind this. Like I can just put it on. Yeah. And then you smartwatch all in one? It, 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 I don't think it would be a smartwatch. It'd be more like a bangle. Like with how big it would be, it, it'd be like you're, you're wearing some like Egyptian jewelry that like allows you to command the sun. Yes. <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. I'm okay with it. I like the idea. Uh, the implementation, like it would be massive even on my gigantic forearms. And then because I can't put things in like order, Nvidia uh, has promised to improve DLSS in future updates, especially for Metro Exodus, talking about how they actually didn't have time to in introduce all of the image quality improvements that they were going to do when the game came out and that they're still training their supercomputer on the video game. Hopefully that gets rid of the Vaseline. We'll see. Uh, I hear that you need some special tools to remove that, not just, uh, you know, sheer computing power. And then uh, Carlton from Fresh Pins of Bel Air, also known as Alfonso Ribeiro, has been rejected his copyright for the Carlton dance. This was part of the scheme to get a whole bunch of money from Epic Games, you know, the dying game company that made the once popular game called Fortnite that's losing out to Apex Legends. And then by this time next year, we won't be talking about Fortnite at all. Anyways, there is a whole bunch of people suing them for the dances that are in the game. And this was one of the steps where if he had copyright, then he could actually do it. But he got rejected because dance moves aren't copyrightable. It's not hard. Choreographed dances are, but individual dance moves, no. And then in a future that I definitely want, uh, Audi is implementing something that allows you to not run red lights, but get to the optimal speed so that you don't stop at red lights, which would be fantastic. I hope it tells me to go 175 miles an hour through the robot that I need to get through when this light turns green, this one's turning red. I have to go fast to get through it because it's every single time. Why is this grid on an inefficient system where I can't drive through both? It's not like there's major traffic. I'm not upset about one specific area. I am. Which one? I got caught on nearly every single robot this morning. It's because you drive a stupid little car. You need an Audi, my friends. It's coming to the TT. You in an Audi TT? I can totally just picture it. That's a Reese car. 100%. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap up this episode of Hot News there. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Again, no beef between me and Carrie or me and Linus. Just uh, some good hard facts of copyright claims not being such a big deal. At least I don't think it is because we get them all the freaking time. And seven happening at once is just the machine going, hey, all of them. Anyways, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. Check out our merch in the video description if you wanna pick it up. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video.
Love you too. We have fancy RAM in this box. It's so fancy. You already know. Oh, oh, please end the video, Reese. I don't want to keep singing this song. Tokyo.